episode of the Cane Growers Virtual Bus Tour, we're in the Mackay region. It's winter, and on Stephen Musket's Homebush Farm, a new haul-out driver is being trained. This is a controlled traffic precision farming system with an accuracy of just a few centimetres. The haul-out tractor needs to keep pace with the harvester and hold a straight line in the row spacing so it doesn't disturb the plant bed. Precision farming is all about maintaining a plant bed free of compaction, rich in nutrient and with just enough water to ensure the crop grows at its optimum. With the day's quota cut, Stephen is meeting with Mackay Area Productivity Services Senior Extension Agronomist David McCallum to check out the farm's fallow crops and the irrigation monitoring systems. This block is midway through a 24-month fallow and corn is just emerging. In the summer of 2019 and then early 2020 we had a crop of soybeans in here. Zonal tilled straight into the trash blanket and, and planted. We've had mill mud applied to it before the planting, before the renovation. Then in May, we've harvested the soybeans off, off this crop, done a, a light bed renovation, put some nutrition down, and now we've got corn. Soil health and nutrient management is a core module of the Queensland Sugarcane Industries Best Management Practice Program, Smart Cane BMP. As an accredited grower, Stephen uses legume fallows to enrich his soil with organic nitrogen. He's also trialled a variety of crops over the years to boost soil health and provide alternate income streams. We've been heavily involved in um, alternate crops, you know, probably for the last 15 years, maybe even a little bit longer. There's obviously a few benefits that we believe in the alternate crops. One is uh, like the soil health. So this block here, it's actually under a 24 month fallow. This will have, it will, will harvest the corn off it. Then we'll be going back into a soy crop in summer and then planted back into cane sort of in sort of April, June in 2021. Alternate crops get a big tick of approval from an agronomy perspective. They give the soil a rest from monocropping and when done the smart way, restore nitrogen, carbon and beneficial microbes. I think the diversity from cane um, back to soybeans, back to um, corn, back to cane just gives such a variety of crops in the soil, helps the biology, it's income to the grower if he does it well and the prices are reasonable so there's benefits all around. The change from cane to uh, legumes, broadleaf does a lot of wonderful things, soybeans are renowned for uh, putting a lot of organic matter back into the soil. Yeah you know, with sugar at you know that 10-11 cents a pound um, it's not much joy for anyone at the moment. So this is just, you know, it's one way of supplementing the income um, with, you know, some soil health, health benefits. But the real winner at the end of the day is the following cane crop that we planted in 2021. You know, other, other blocks that we've done under the 24 month fallow system, we seem to get increased yields. Um, so at the end of the day, it's, you know, it's something win-win for everybody. With a variety of crops across two farms at Homebush and Oakenden, getting irrigation spot on is crucial. Stephen uses G-dot sensors made from gypsum to measure water pressure in the soil. The soil moisture tension display tells him when it's time to irrigate. All seven dots illuminated, it's just showing us that it's got a full water holding capacity. So look, this block, obviously we've had some fairly good early, early winter rain. After emergence, we've just given this in the last week, a 25 mil overhead irrigation, just to incorporate our pre-emergent chemicals in. And that's why, you know, it's obviously right up into the, into the full zone. Six probes are positioned across the muskets farms as a cost-effective option for monitoring fallow crops on a short turnaround and the sensor can be easily repositioned once the roots take hold. At this stage we've got the, the calcium block in to about 150 millimetres. We're trying to get that calcium block right at the root zone. As this crop develops the corn starts throwing its secondary roots down. We'll remove the calcium block and take that down to probably around 300 mil. Our belief is your, your calcium block should be where the root zone and where the extraction point is. Low pressure centre pivot irrigators cover around half of the cropping area on the farms and they fit nicely with a best practice approach to farming. This one mostly relies on solar power. It's automated, can deliver water precisely and requires less labour than other methods. This one's you know, like 412 metres long. Uh, we're doing about you know, 60 hectares under, under this machine. 
through to information their probes and GDOTs are giving us, we're just looking at that and then once it triggers an irrigation, we're irrigating, we open everything up. You know, we've got a whole range of different systems. You know, we've got a couple of pivots. We've got a lot of flood irrigation. Yeah, you know, we've got high pressure guns and we've also got a small block of trickle in as well. In the cane crop, a more sophisticated system keeps a close eye on water use. Beneath the trash blanket here, a capacitance probe is measuring soil moisture. The EnviroPro device checks moisture at 10 centimetre intervals to a depth of 80 centimetres. It's hardwired to a data logger that uploads information to the cloud via the 4G network. MAPS has teamed up with technology provider Outpost Central to deliver the system, so growers have access to detailed irrigation data in real time. Through Outpost Central, it's basically just a website. We can access that information on our phone or our you know, computers at home. It's just something like a traditional in the morning when you get up to have your cup of tea and coffee. You know, you're flicking through the weather and that's the next page I flick through is what our moisture pros have done in the last 24 hours. At the MAPS office, David can keep a close eye on crop water use at farms connected to the network and give growers feedback. Information is graphically displayed and the soil moisture stack graph of the probe on Stephen's return block provides a clear picture of what's happening. The return crop has an established root system and sensors close to the surface are showing minimal drawdown. What the graph does show is activity deeper in the soil profile. But further down up the 20 and the 30, you can see a bit of the downward slope in the, uh, the graph, which means that um, the plant, which is a very young, just, just been cut return crop, so the roots wouldn't be very active, but they are starting to use that moisture because of that down, downward influence. The other beauty with this information, this information is just not for us. Anybody can get onto the MAPS website and you know, look at any, anybody's um, probe. So look, if you're in, in an area where you know, your neighbour or your bloke up the road's got a probe, it's just an indication. You know? Funding from the Queensland Government's Farm Water Futures Program, accessed via cane growers, helps the team at MAPS maintain the GDOTs and the capacitance probes so farmers have continued access to real-time information. It's really important for us as a uh, extension organisation to keep working with growers on irrigation efficiency. To get better sugarcane you have to water it efficiently, at timely and not waste the water because power and water are very expensive. And there's the added benefit of ensuring crop nutrition and chemical applications are watered in correctly and don't run off. Taking the guesswork out of irrigating is the best management practice approach. Prior to the use of GDOTs and moisture probes, we were sort of, I would say, guessing when we were going to do our irrigation. That may have been from a drive around to, oh gee, you know, I think it's dry, we need to water. Otherwise it was a scheduled program like, you know, making sure our nutrition and herbicides are, are irrigated in to stop movement. So now it's taken the guesswork out of it. We probably thought we were irrigating right before, but now we know.